Um, good evening. Thank you very much, Dr. Chiwengo, for um, that nice introduction and for giving me an opportunity to participate in this very um, important program at Creighton University. I'm proud to be um, contributing this little piece um, to the widening of knowledge on Africa at Creighton. Now, um, the GRIO is an extremely, extremely important institution in Africa, um, especially in the parts of West Africa from where we came, um, the Senegambia region, Ghana, you know, that region around Mali. Um, the GRIO holds a very, very, very important position, a position that's not possible to um, explain in 15 minutes. However, um, I'll try as much as possible to give you the gist of the roles and functions of the GRIO in um, Monday society. Um, up until the middle of the um, 20th century, uh, Western hit historians argued that Africa had no history. Um, historians uh, believed that in Africa, there were only um, groups of very hostile tribes that fought all the time um, and that everything was darkness in Africa. Um, the philosopher of history, George Hegel, um, wrote that, and I quote, in Africa, history is out of the quicksand. Man has not progressed beyond a merely sensuous existence and has found it impossible to develop any further. All our observations of African man saw him living in a state of savagery and barbarism. And perhaps taking his cue from um, Hegel, the British historian Trevor Roper added that perhaps in the future there was going to be some African history, but as of the 1960s, 1963 precisely, there was no African history. There was, he said, and I quote, only the history of Europeans in Africa. The rest is darkness, and darkness is not a subject of history. Trevor Roper went on to argue that Western historians could not afford to amuse themselves with the unrewarding garrisons of barbarous tribes in picturesque but irrelevant corners of the globe, being um, Africa. Um, I find no better way to start an introduction of the Grio and his role in, and her role too, there are female Grios and male Grios, and their role in African society um, by, without saying that it was the Grio that helped revive, that helped save African history. The Grio salvaged African history from oblivion because the Grio is a historian um, par excellence. Grios play a number of very, very important roles in Monday society. Chief among these roles is the role of historian. It is the Grio that collects and preserves the histories, customs, and traditions of his people for future generations. Historical knowledge is passed from parents to children of both sexes, who in turn pass this knowledge onto their children and their grandchildren. And while this verbal passage of historical knowledge has its limitations, students of African history here at Creighton and all over the world today can read about the ancient empire of Mali and its legendary founder, Sunyata, thanks to the work of the African griot. It is inconceivable that anyone can teach a course, a survey course, an introductory course on African history without using one of uh, the Sunyata epics, either by David Conrad or by D.T. Nyan. And those are direct translations of the history of the ancient Mali empire, according to the griots. Moreover, no individual griot is an expert in only the history and traditions of his or her people. Rather, griots possess an amazing range of expertise in the histories and traditions of both individual families, individual rulers, and whole communities. Different peoples and cultures across geographical space and time owe a debt of gratitude to the griot for keeping their histories. For example, by learning from their own masters, usually their own parents, as well as from other master griots, um, griots like Jelly Suso and Kuyate here can narrate the histories of such pre-colonial rulers as Sunyata Keta of Mali, Samori Ture of Guinea, Sumauro Kante of Suso, Kelefa Sane of Kabu, and Musa Molo of Fuladu. Now, all of these areas are different areas located in different places in the West African region, but every particular griot should be able to, or is able to, narrate the histories of these different peoples, not only coming from their own ethnic group, but from other ethnic groups as well. In traditional Africa, griot families live among the people. 
in, as respected custodians of past glories, as epitomes of knowledge and wisdom, and as advisors, musicians, and entertainers of the population. They preside at naming ceremonies and are at the ones that, on the seventh day of a child's birth, proclaim its name to the community. So in most African societies, there is a naming ceremony seven days after the child is born. Now, it is the role of the griot to announce the name. The parents will tell the griot the name of the child, and the griot will stand up and say, this child has been called Papa Suso. So that is how it goes. They um, serve crucial functions at wedding ceremonies and are experts at the art of dispute resolution as well. They are peacemakers, and normally, if there is a very um, uh, difficult conflict, if a griot comes, they are respected by both parties, and therefore the likelihood of having peace is very much um, enhanced. They are the friends of the humble and the nemesis of the arrogant. Their words could be as sweet as honey and as hot as fire, and one only disparages a griot in one's ultimate detriment, to one's ultimate detriment. You can't disrespect a griot in Africa. Even though they are praise singers, they are historians, the most powerful of the community pays them a lot of respect. Otherwise, downfall is what happens to them. In pre-colonial Africa, griots were the ruler's most trusted confidants and advisors. A king and his griot were inseparable, both in peacetime and in wartime. In wartime, the griot rode alongside the king into the field of battle. His function before battles was joined, what we are joined was to remind the king and his soldiers of the glories of their ancestors and the hopes of their progeny, to inspire in them the courage and confidence they needed to defeat the enemy and to be a witness to history in the making. They are there both as his witnesses to history in the making as well as to serve as a source of inspiration for the king and his troops. The traditional African ruler of pre-colonial days did not address his subjects directly. His words were heard through the voice of the griot. Whether he addresses a small audience of three or four people or a large audience of hundreds of people, the king's voice never rose beyond a loud whisper only heard by those closest to him, including the griot. It was the griot that then proclaimed the words of the king from where the king sat. Over the past several decades, the, griot, the role of the griot as musician and entertainer has been widely appropriated by many um, non-griots due to the influence of Western modernity and the capitalist world economy in Africa. So anyone can get up today and sing um, without being a griot. Many non-griots are now musicians, a role that in traditional Africa was strictly performed by the griot. Many people now narrate the genealogies of persons of importance or wealthy persons for commercial purposes, a role that, again, in traditional Africa was strictly reserved for the griot. People like me can now become experts in African history, but only because the griot made it possible for African history to develop as a discipline in the first place. This appropriation of the griot's functions notwithstanding, the griot continues to be a very important figure in African societies to this day. As historians, as entertainers, as musicians, and as custodians of traditional knowledge and wisdom. Moreover, real griots can still be recognized because they possess very distinctive last names among the Mande. So if you know the Mande and you hear a griot's last name, you will know that this person is a griot. Um, only pure griots carry names like Suso, like Kuyate, like Jabate, Drame, and Saho, among others. And while people with last names like mine may today claim to be historians of Africa, the real historians of Africa are Papa Suso and Mamadou Kuyate here, for whom I now um, respectfully vacate the stage. Welcome to creating Mr. Suso and Kuyate. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Well, if you work with an intellectuals, so you have no problem. I was supposed to explain all of this to you, but now Dr. Jello has voice of everything, everything. I don't have anything more to tell you. But I will talk to you a little bit about this uh, two instrument, and this is called Kora, K-O-R-A. And it has 21 strings. 
So we played with four fingers, these two down, these two up, while you hold with this and this. And built out with a cow high, crosswoods, and a calabas. Calabas, this is something that we grow up in Africa. It's very big, grow on the ground. In fact, this is just half of it. I have three different colors, large, medium, and small. So this is the medium size of it. So they're big. The kora is a very important instrument in my part of Africa because this is one of the instruments used to recount the tribal history of our people. And invented by the Suso family, the family where I came from. Suso. And it's an old instrument, not this particular one, but the invention of the instrument itself is only way back 13th century, passed down from father to son, from generations to generation. So I got it from my father, my father got it from his father. This instrument, other instrument, this is called balafon, but here you may call it African xylophone. It's even older than this one. And tonight, I have with me very important griot, because we have a lot of griot, uh, diff uh, different family of griots, like uh, Dr. Jalo mentioned to you, Suso, Kuyate, Jobate, blah, 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 blah. But among them, Jobate is number one. I, I mean, uh, Kuyate is number one. Kuyate is a descendant of Balafasi Kuyate. Balafasi Kuyate, uh, this is the griot attached to Sunjata Keita. Tonight, we're going to start this concert by playing Sunjata because we, we owe allegiance to Sunjata Keta. He was working with his griot in the bush, and the griot was very hungry. They look around everything, they couldn't find anything for the griot to eat. So what he did was, he went and hid himself and caught his own flesh. And then, Bonnie he cook it and come and give it to the griot to eat. So since that day, the griots or this allegiance to Sunjata that wherever we perform, we start with Sunjata. So we're going to start with Sunjata Keta. Thank you. <laughs> Important announcement. I just came back from Gambia and broke. We brought CDs to sell by all, by everything, okay?
bella talema Thank you. 
Not a round of applause for Balakuyate. Hey, Balakuyate. The songs that we play with the instrument are connected with different events. Some of them are just for entertainment for the king and his people. You're going to see the king sitting here, the griot sitting next to the king playing and while his people sitting looking. So we have songs connected with that. Uh, some of them are connected with wedding or naming ceremony or ritual circumcision. And some of them are connected with love. This will always say, it, I love you. Oh, it will make you, you know, think about the love of your life. So we're going to play a love song for you. But uh, I want to see everybody second themselves like this.
Je kumangana juma fana ma na fa la la baba ninzu Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to buy my CD. I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we take a few questions before we move to the next song. We, we're going to be here tonight. To, until tomorrow morning. Nobody sleep tonight. Nobody. I'm going to ask them to close the door so we all st stay here tonight. But if you have any question to the music, the instrument, the, or the, the, the culture, the tradition, everything, we'll do the best to answer you. But if you not, we'll keep, uh, continue to give you beautiful music. This, this, yeah.
Well, we, when you play the basic part, then they, after, well, after some time, you improvise. Yeah. It's not written, though, like do, Doremi Fasola. This is all a memory. So it is all, you learn this through memory. So it is not written. So, but we, we try. My brother, hey, how are you? <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, what I do mostly is uh, traditional, because these uh, the song, uh, traditional songs, uh, these are the songs that have history of our people. And uh, most of my activity in this country is with uh, colleges, schools. So uh, each time you go to schools, they want to know what you do, they want to know what you have, blah, 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 they want to know why, where you come from, what, what is there. So um, this is why I just stick to the traditional songs. but. We have songs of celebrations. Um, we have songs um, uh, called Chedo. These are songs that, uh, this is the time we have slavery among ourselves in Africa. You know, capture each other, take them away against their own will. So uh, the, this was going on for some time. But after some time, then there comes a resistance on the other side. Now, each time people are ready to go to war, so you have songs to play to exhort people to go to the battlefront, not to fear from the enemies. So this is what we do. And we have songs that we can just play for you to dance. Right? You want to dance tonight? Do you know how to jump? Jump tall. Right? <laughs> OK, thank you.
Good. But I want us to play Kaira. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the word Kaira means peace. It's a song of celebration. And wherever you play this song, people will get up and dance. Hey, let's dance. Tonight is a night of dance. 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 My brother, I want to see you jump up. You touch that light, okay?
I have an announcement to make. Beautiful announcements. I'm sure you will like it. We're going to play our last piece. I want everybody to get up now. We jump, celebrate. At the end of it, you buy the CD and go home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you.